Okay, so uh, for those of you that already use Stock in the Channel, this, this page is probably fairly familiar to you. Um, Stock in the Channel uh, the, primarily is involved in taking data feeds from distribution, bringing them into the system, and then allowing you to uh, see that data in, in a number of ways. Uh, primarily in standard view, or what we call standard view, is, is uh, the ability to manage your incoming feeds. So um, for data feed export, it's all about the flow of data. So information comes from distribution into stock in the channel, uh, and then you're able to manipulate that information before it is exported uh, out to a third party system, be it an e-commerce website or a, um, a back office system. So for those of you that are involved in the purchasing or the setup, you would probably be using the Manage Distributor screen. And on here, you can uh, plug in your incoming feeds, your information coming in from distribution. We're obviously logged in on a, a demo account, which has uh, visibility of feeds from a number of suppliers. Uh, we have a whole uh, rostrum, if you like, of, of what we would call public distributors who are quite easy to set up. And it's, it's very, very simple to add these distributors. If you have an account with them, uh, you're then able to uh, request access to pricing within Stock in the Channel. Um, for those of you that haven't done this before, we're just going to pick on bits and PCs. And uh, it's quite simple. When you uh, click on a distributor, you get a page that's, that contains some information about them, including contact information. And you have a button up here that says set up pricing. And in here, we can just put in an account number if you have one. Um, and then hit the apply button. Uh, now, if we go back to the distributors view all page, we can see straight away that bits and PCs are in this list and uh, we have active uh, visibility of pricing. Most distributors take a little bit longer to set up than that. Uh, normally, they're, because they're dealing with customer specific pricing, so it's your own pricing from distribution and the feeds may take a, a short while to, uh, to be set up. Okay, so uh, what you would see is uh, any requests that you've made that haven't been approved would appear down here in the pending applications area and uh, until they're approved and then they'll move straight away into the, the green uh, active uh, distributors area. It's quite important for anybody that's relying on this data, if you're exporting the information to a third party system or e-commerce site, that you keep an eye on this table. Um, it tells you here the last time that we imported the data and the last time that the data was updated. So if you see any of your distributor feeds have a status of old data or the, the import hasn't run for quite some time, this normally means that there's a problem with the file. Perhaps uh, the distributors stopped writing the file for whatever reason, or our access uh, to the to the file is, is has been revoked. Um, this can happen perhaps if you, uh, heaven forbid, if you were ever put on hold by a distributor, they might turn off the provision of the feed and then forget to turn it back on. So uh, you, this is your responsibility to keep an eye on this this list uh, and make sure that it's uh, all active. Uh, some companies will obviously have warehouse inventory of your own or perhaps you you work with a distributor that's not in our, our big list of, of all of the uh, 140 odd supplies that we've got plugged in. Um, this can still be, in, these, these supplies can still be included or your own inventory can still be included. We have an interface for plugging in what we call private data feeds. So uh, the, the products that you upload into Stock in the Channel on your own account and as a private feed will only be visible to yourself and, and the people that share your account with you. Uh, so it's very useful for perhaps you work with a, a partner in Europe um, uh, that does some special pricing on hard drives or something and you're able to plug that supplier in and it's then with, in, the, in the system with all of your other suppliers um, and you can use that data uh, when you come to export. Um, quite an important uh, area is the user manager user manager on the account. You can always get back to your account page by just clicking on your name in the top right hand corner and in here you will see uh, the user manager. If you're an admin user or you have the permission you'll be able to access uh, this screen where you can add additional users. It's quite important that the people within your organization who need to do certain jobs within Stock in the Channel actually have uh, the correct permissions. So 
if we click on uh, Tony Mayers, it's uh, the owner of uh, Stock in the Channel, uh, he, he could have different permissions. The permission to actually plug in additional distributors is called managed distributors, not not surprisingly, um, and there's also one here for managed web store, which is uh, the area that we're going to take a look at next. So only people that have a tick in these two boxes will be able to uh, manipulate the data that is being exported from the system, or in this instance, manage the distributors that are being plugged in to your, your stock in the channel account. Um, so that's uh, the real sort of whistle-stop tour of what we would call standard view. This is the, uh, the, the version of stock in the channel that most reseller clients have access to. It's going to move on now to the data export interface. Um, well, we call these internally, we call them stores areas, uh, but you can have as many of these at attached to your individual stock in the channel account as you, as you wish. So we have two here, one, one called IT and toner and one called IT only. So we have different data exports that we use. We're going to start off by looking at the IT only one. Uh, this can be renamed, so it could be, you know, uh, perhaps the name of your website. Uh, we set this for you or you, you can edit it yourself as well. Uh, the first page that you land on, is it, we call it the dashboard. Uh, this is really just an overview of what's happening in the the data export that we're generating for you. Um, so you can see here uh, the markups area. Uh, you have the ability to manage and create as many markup rules as you like. You can have uh, an unlimited number of markup rules. There's a default markup and a highest markup. We'll we'll look at each each of these areas in some more detail, but this really is just an overview of what's happening with the the your incoming feeds, how many are being exported, and which categories are being included. At the moment, this is what we would uh, term a, a very vanilla uh, stores area, so nothing has been changed from the default settings uh, that you would inherit this. Uh, so if you was to to start a new store with us today or a new export with us today, you would get our default category structure and default brands and you everything would be turned on. And then it's for you to turn stuff off that you that you don't want. Um, the the main thing that happens in the stores area really is is the process of uh, process of elimination. It's product selection, which items you want you want to be included in the data feed that we generate and export for you and which items you don't. Uh, the first place to start uh, for most people tends to be distributors. So if we click on the, the blue distributors button, what what you'll notice when you're whenever you're doing anything in what we call the stores areas, you you can do a search and you will see similar results to what you see in in our main stock in the channel view. But the products that are within the results will only be the items that are offered by the distributors that you have visibility of pricing for. That's quite a long sentence, so I'll break it down for you. You will only see products in search results from the suppliers that you have plugged in to stock in the channel. Uh, so uh, in here we can see the list of uh, the distributors that are active on this account. Uh, bits and PCs you can see are, are there, but they're not. Uh, ticked because they've only just been added as you saw I added them a few moments ago and uh, the, the first thing that happens on this screen really is that you may say okay well I don't want to include this distributor this distributor this distributor this distributor and this distributor so you, you can just turn off distributors that you don't want to include in the data export uh, element of stock in the channel uh, you will still have visibility of your cost prices from them within standard view uh, but their products will not be considered uh, at all in any way when uh, we're calculating sale prices, when we're deciding which products to export uh, to, to your system, uh, to your third party system. So uh, this is the first element of product selection really. And you know, typically people might work with four, five, six distributors for export, but they might have visibility of 20. Um, you know, this is quite normal. Uh, so, the next, the next thing that people tend to do is to go to brands and say, okay, well, uh, by default, every single brand from all of the distributors that you've got connected um, are, are set to, to be included. But then you might say, actually, only, you know, I don't want AF, I don't want these brands. So again, we're just eliminating products by 
conditions the first one being distributor the next one being brands and uh, you can go through A to Z it's, it's really straightforward this area uh, just turn off brands that you don't want uh, as many as you want or you can come at it the other way which is to uh, select none and that will untick everybody and then you can go the other way and just tick the ones that you do want um, and this will uh, you know dramatically reduce the uh, number of products that are set to export um, the the next criteria tends to be categorization and uh, again uh, you will inherit our default category structure um, at the start but you're not tied to this uh, the categories that you export and the way that they appear in the export is completely up to you so typically if people are using this data in, in an e-commerce uh, web shop uh, and you're using top navigation so you've got your categories across the top or your, your products uh, navigation across the top um, it's unlikely that you're going to want as many top level categories as, as you will start with here and you probably want to keep the names quite short as well so typically what people do is they come in and they say right audio audio and home theater we're going to rename that to AV uh, and you just rename it and save and it might be that you say well there's a lot of computing categories here we're going to add a, a new category and we're going to rename that to uh, computing and you'll notice that the uh, this category is uh, is blue and that means that you know it's a category that you've created rather than one of our default categories the ones that we have uh, already pre-populated with products will always be yellow doesn't matter if you uh, rename them or change the order of the categories they'll always stay yellow and you'll know that that's actually uh, a stock in the channel category rather than one that you've created yourself um, what we're going to do now is say right this computing category has got nothing in it it's just empty it's an empty folder at the moment but we can just drag and drop um, all of the categories that we consider to be uh, computing related um, and just put them in there uh, computer components you get the idea so and you, you would just continue to do that kind of work really until you end up with a much smaller more manageable um, list you might put so you can change the order you can literally just drag and drop these you might say well I want that to be moved somewhere else you can you can move the categories wherever you want within the tree and you can rename them you can even say um, okay within computer components uh, I don't want CPU holders well you can just turn that category off it's still there uh, but it's grayed out um, and it, it won't be it won't be included in you know none of the products within that category will be included and the category itself won't won't exist in the in the data export that we provide um, okay so yeah this is really the the main hub of managing your your category structure within stock in the channel so uh, we're going to move on now to uh, the dashboard back to the dashboard easiest way to get there there's some breadcrumbs that you'll see underneath the top navigation uh, it tells you where you are within the system at this point so we're on the manage distributors page but we can click this link and it takes us back to the dashboard and uh, on the dashboard we're going to go into the manage markups area and in here you can um, first of all there is the final part of product selection uh, so we, we sort of touched on that already product selection you, you you're basically taking all of the products from all of your suppliers and then you're narrowing down the items by removing distributors, removing brands, removing categories that you're not interested in. The final part of product selection is something called stock threshold. And um, what this means is that you may decide to not include products where there are less than five available in distribution. Um, you might do this because you're, you're using these stock values to populate uh, eBay or Amazon or something along them lines where um, you know you, you absolutely have to deliver uh, if someone orders because otherwise it's your your negative feedback or your reputation uh, is damaged um, so some people can set this you know some people set this at 10 20 
I've seen people set it at zero and uh, you would do that because you want people to have visibility of what might be available and be able to find whatever they want on your website. Um, obviously if you do that then it actually enables another section here which is called days uh, before end of life. So naturally products do go out of stock from time to time in distribution uh, or going to constraint for for you know period period of time, and it might be that you set a days days to end of life to be uh, 14. So what this means is if a particular product has been stock value zero for for more than 14 days, it then gets removed from your catalog. If it's if it's only been 10 days, it's still on your on the files that we publish, albeit that we will export a stock value of zero. Um, so yeah, this is quite useful for, for managing uh, products that are, are out of stock but likely to come back. Um, so yeah, that's uh, stock threshold. So as I say, that's the, really the last part of product selection. So what we've done so far is we've, we've eliminated a whole load of products and we're down to 50,000 lines left that are going to be included in the data feed that we generate every morning for your uh, for your website or your, your back office system um, the next thing to do is to is to put prices against all of those items now depending on the export structure that you take from stock in the channel we have a, a couple that you can choose from we have what's called a flat file which is pretty simple it'll open in Excel it'll be lots of columns it's a CSV file actually but you can obviously open that in within Excel you know, have lots of columns for different uh, fields, you know, different values, and the the flat file is is good and easy to look at. It's quite a heavy, it can be quite a very quite a heavy file if you've got a lot of products, um, and there will be four or five columns in that file per distributor that you decide to include. It does limit you to five distributors, the five cheapest distributors. So you can have first cheapest, second cheapest, third cheapest distributor on the day for each given product and it will include the distributor part number the distributor product title the distributor stock level distributor price so that's why you and there's one other uh, so that's why you'll end up with so many columns in the file the other format that we export is what's called a relational database structure this is the format that we actually use ourselves when we're importing content and products into the magento e-commerce platform for which we have our our own plugin that we've we have developed um, the relational database structure is without the limitation of, of five distributors because it doesn't insist on um, having one file so you, there'll be a file there called distributor stock and prices and the same product can be in that file multiple times uh, for different distributors so you, you can basically take all of your suppliers that are, are being fed into stock in the channel and take the stock value and the, and the price in for every single one of those distributors in the relational structure. Um, so we've we've limited we've limited our portfolio down to 50,000 products, and we now need to put a sell price on those 50,000 products. What the system will do is it will um, take all of the cost prices from the suppliers that have stock available. So the, the cheapest guy hasn't got stock; it moves to the next cheapest guy. Uh, so yeah, it uses the lowest cost price from your suppliers that have stock and then it applies a markup percentage and you can create as many rules here as you like to determine that percentage you can see some rules here at the bottom uh, which are well these two are, are purely about price so this one says anything costing from one penny to ten pounds put a markup uh, of five pounds uh, add five pounds to the to the the cost and that's your sale price um, the next one says 10 pounds and a penny to 50 pounds make 10 percent okay so you can start to, to get an idea of, of the rules that you can make you can create rules uh, an unlimited number so we could say we're looking for uh, and by the way the category structure is the one that we've designed so we've we've now got computing select subcategory computers and uh, all in one pcs and we want uh, the hp branded ones uh, costing between 200 pounds and uh, 280 pounds uh, I want to make a percentage markup of uh, 8 percent save 
So that rule has gone straight to the top of the list and you can put it anywhere in the list you, you wish. The, the, the relevance of the order of the rules is, is quite important. Um, if there are two rules in this list that could apply to a product, only the one highest or the, the one uh, higher up the list will be used. So effectively we get the products that have, have passed all of your product selection process. We start at the top and we run down this list until we find a rule that can be applied to that, that product. So it meets all of the criteria that have been selected. Um, so looking at this rule here, uh, the 10, 10 pounds and a penny to 50 pounds, if that was here, anything that that has a cost price range of 10 pounds 10 pounds to 50 pounds will will not get past this rule even if it's an ip phone from free free telecom uh this rule will effectively not get get used so that's why the order is quite important uh typically if you're if you're creating rules that just look at price they should always be at the bottom because then your your product specific or brand specific or category specific rules can be higher up and be used uh, preferentially. With our markup rules, they used to be limited to um, percentage only, but as some people pointed out, if you've got very low value items, um, very low value items, even if you put you know 300 percent on uh you actually still don't want the order because it's it's so such a negligible profit value um so yeah we allow people to add a, a, a pounds markup as well as a percentage markup to the rules and that's quite a new development i would say in the last six months maybe that that's been added um so it's quite good because some people were just saying if it's if the cost price is very low i don't want it on my website exclude it completely we don't need to do that anymore you can now actually include those items okay um, the customer specific pricing uh, okay so uh, for uh, for Magento again we have a, a plugin uh, which allows you to um, actually handle customer specific pricing within Magento you can have um, what are called customer price groups uh, yeah, you can set them up in Magento, so you, you might have an education group to which you add all of your uh, schools and colleges, and you have a price file or a price uh, structure that you've generated just for just for your education customers. Um, you add your customers to the price group, and then we're able to actually populate a separate price tier, if you like, within, um, within Magento for you. So down here, we have customer groups, and what you're able to do is to create um, well there you go there's the education customer uh, group or you can create a new group and you can create separate rules just for this group of customers now what would happen is that when we export the price in you would get additional columns in your in your price feed um, that would be called education customer uh, that would be the header for example and um, if if you only set a couple of price rules here it's not going to cover every single product that you're exporting. So the default default pricing will populate that column also. But if, uh, if there's a particular product that you want to give individual pricing for, you can. And you can even do it down at a SKU level where you can type in you know, an actual part number uh, and set a, a markup price, absolute price. Um, you know, so you could say, I'm going to sell that product at £100. And that's uh, absolute price. It's not a percentage or an uplift. That's an absolute price. So you can do absolute price. You can do, you know, on a on a product, on a price range, on a, anything. Uh, and the this can be uh, client specific. It can be client group specific. So there's different ways that you can you can cook this really. Um, so Manish, Manish is saying he's still confused on markups versus setting a sale price by marking up. Uh, if you you know if you want to go into that a little bit more detail you know by all means uh, give us a call uh, but we'll take, we'll take that offline because uh, there's just quite a few people on on the call and I don't want to hold up the presentation anymore um, so yeah you can have price groups and and these can be um, you know as many as you want really and you can create new ones 
you know, as you like. Uh, you know, this is quite a. It's, this has been around for a little while. Uh, we have a the plugin in Magento for it, but obviously, if you're taking the data out into another system as well, you're, you're still able to use this uh, this functionality to manage different pricing for different clients. Just to, to finish this uh, section off, if I hate seeing this a global markup set to zero. This is your safety net. Um, chances are you're going to miss something, to be honest, unless you create um, cost price uh, rules that go all the way up to millions. There's going to be a product that isn't getting a, an uplift somewhere in there. So you can put this at 20%, and this is your safety net. So what happens is say we get all of the products in, from distribution, we run down the list uh, of, uh, of products here, of, of rules here. We get to the bottom, and we haven't found a rule that applies to the product. We default to this instead, so we still apply a 20% uplift in this instance to um, uh, to the products. So it prevents you selling anything at cost, which I'm sure no one really wants to do, unless you're on some sort of wonderful rebate scheme. Um, okay. So, any further questions on that section? Okay, in that case, we're going to move on now to um, to take a look at uh, product uh, product management, specifically uh, individual products. So, Stock in the Channels gives you a lot of very powerful options uh, for managing product selection, as we've already discussed, and categories. I'm going to come at this from a different, slightly different angle. Now, we're going to go to a distributor. I'm going to pick uh, Tech Data. So, we're now viewing when it loads. Uh, the available uh, products from tech data um, within store view there are two ways to see the the search results you can have or two views effectively you have what's called a condensed result which shows you the markup and the price uh, the marked up price and then uh, you also have uh, the expanded results which looks a bit more familiar to uh, to what you'll see uh, in standard stock in the channel so this, in this instance, you get a, um, uh, you know, a thumbnail. You would see the suppliers, but we, we've we've only selected tech data, uh, yeah, to, to view products from tech data. The reason I've done this is because when you come at it from a an angle of selecting a distributor, you may also get this filter here, this this navigation filter on the left, which you won't have seen before in standard view. Uh, it's not available, but on the incoming feed from tech data we pick up a, a column that's called category so it's it's what uh, it's what tech data categorized the product as now you'll probably be aware that you know much as we we try hard and we work with with partners like icecap uh, to to provide you with uh, content uh, images technical specs descriptions categorization uh, it's not a perfect solution because products uh, in the IT industry come and go really quickly uh, and there's always a, a lag uh, while we wait for our partners to catch up with the content. Actually, I'm going to come unstuck here because I think they've done a really, really good job. Oh no, yeah, there we go. So there are a whole load of uncategorized products. So there is a category in Stock in the Channel called uncategorized products. And I've just taken the tech data range of 106,000 products, and I filtered it by showing me the ones that are, are not categorized by IceCat. However, we still have down here uh, the distributors categorization for these items. And what we may do is now say, okay, 3D consumables. Um, I'm going to filter by 3D consumables. And uh, we can straight away. So we have now taken started off with a hundred thousand products and we filled it down to 13 by looking at uncategorized products from tech data that they call 3d consumables actually they're all out of stock but that's neither here nor there um, what we have the option to do now is to actually uh, select all of the items so it's put a tick box in all of these uh, you could say all of them apart from this one I don't know why but you might just not want to include everything and then you have the option here for bulk edit. And um, you've got quite a few things you can do in, in the bulk edit. Uh, you could apply uh, an image. So we might say uh, 
main image, I want to use a, an image, you can paste the image URL in here. Um, or you could say, I want to sell all of these products at a, a markup percentage of 8%, ignoring these, you know, the, the rules on the markup uh, area. You could say, I want to um, manually override the stock level on these so that it always shows as 25. Even if, it, even if the distributor's got zero, I want to show 25. Uh, you could also say, I want to move these products into the category uh, printers and supplies, uh, printing supplies, and maybe there's not a category yet for this, but you might want to we'll put them in ink cartridges for now. They probably, you, you could have just created a category called um, 3D uh, supplies, whatever you like, but you can move these products. If I hit save now, it's going to actually act, it's going to do all of that, so I'm going to do it now, actually. Okay, so this is updated, and now uh, because we've got the uncategorized category selected, we're not seeing them results anymore. Uh, so those products have been moved. We could also create a data quality rule. Data quality rules are, are very powerful. Bulk edits only happen to the products that you have selected. So if you if you tick 50 products and you bulk edit them, those products will get changed right now. Data quality rules are another level. They're, these are these are rules that happen every night, and they apply to products that are here now in the system and products that are added in the future. So if you look at how we've got to this uh, set of search results, uh, next week Tech Data add another product that they call uh, 3D consumable. You want it to do the same thing as, as the ones that we've just we've just edited. So you you make the same selection. So we say categorization, uh, copy the product or move the product to the category, um, printer supplies, wherever we want to put it. Printing, you know, it doesn't really matter, but you, you can find the category and then save. And that's actually created a, a rule that will, that will run every night. So it'll pick up new products that are added to the system. And rules, the thing to remember about rules is how you get to the results that uh, is remembered. So we could have started off with a search for iPad, um, you know, and got uh, when it wants to load. Yeah, so we've got 1,372 results, quite a lot, and then filtered them by the ones that are costing 500 to 1,000 um, pounds and are fundamentally in stock. And now we're down to 56 results. Create data quality rule um, and copy these for products to category. In fact, I'm just going to create... You can copy these products to data storage, whatever, wherever you want, save. Now, it doesn't actually make that happen right now because data quality rules only run overnight. So that's one thing you do need to remember. Uh, however, tomorrow, these products will appear in, in two categories. They'll be in the tablets category and the one that we've just created the rule to, to move them into. So this is quite often used by people who have a web store and they want specific products on their homepage perhaps or to appear in multiple categories uh, and they don't want to have to remember to, 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 to activate the same functionality for, for new products every time something's added to the system. Okay, so that's bulk edits and uh, data quality rules. We're, we're coming towards the end of this session now, so if you've got any questions, please do ask them because I'm going to have a you know last roundup of questions and answers before the end. Um, there's one section more that I want to to introduce you to, which is the publish functionality. So every morning we take all of the products from all of your suppliers. Uh, we uh, eliminate the items that you've selected to, to be uh, left out uh, via your product selection of brands and categories and so on. We apply your markup rules and we generate a data set that we deliver to an FTP location on Stock in the Channel to which only you have the FTP access. Uh, however, during the course of the day or normally uh, 
you know you want to change something you you go in and make your changes and quite often when you edit something uh, you want to see that reflected straight away so you can come here and there's an option that says publish when you hit the publish button it'll remind you hey this happens automatically every morning uh, if you want to, to see your changes reflected now please please press the publish button so you can hit the publish now button and then stock in the channel will write a new data set right there and then for you uh, we do limit you you know we, we ask you not to, to do this uh, every day ten times a day because it's quite it's quite intensive process uh, and if everyone's doing it uh, stock in the channel starts to run slow uh, you know it starts to feel the pain a little bit so it, it really should be used for as and when you change something and you want to see the results straight away obviously if you're uh, using the data inside Magento although you've published that data it hasn't necessarily refreshed inside your third party system you, you will still need to tell Magento or your ERP or whatever it is where the data is being used to come and collect that data and suck it in so uh, but this gives you the flexibility to write a new data set uh, as and when you want to thank you all for your for your time and attendance uh, uh, it's quite a, a lot of you have, have come along today and, and most of you have uh, listened to the end which is uh, <laughs> means that I must have been uh, okay uh, you know, we value your feedback we value your business very much so uh, there is a very short questionnaire at the end of this when you close the presentation you'll just be asking you a couple of short questions um, one of the things that we haven't asked on that questionnaire is if there are any other services that you would be interested in learning about so if there are uh, you know for example about our web store sorry about our uh, turnkey web store or about order automation or quote generation um, just drop your account manager an email uh, say hey you know can you do a webinar for that and uh, if enough people ask for it then we'll, we'll do it uh, thank you very much again for your time and uh, yeah you know please feel free to contact us if you, if you think of something later thank you <laughs>